Welcome to episode 44 of the Search with Canada podcast recorded on Wednesday the 15th of January 2020. My name is Mark Williams Cook and today I am joined by a founder of, I'm going to let you say it so I get it right again. Orainti. Orainti, <laughs> an international SEO consultant, Aleda Solis. Aleda uh, is actually doing a talk at Search Norwich this evening about developing actionable and impactful SEO audits and she's been kind enough to give up some more of her time to join me on this podcast and dive into that a little bit more. SEO consultant, speaker, YouTube series host, and I see you've just restarted your email for SEO tips. Um, so thank you very much for finding the time to do this on top of all of that as well. I've got a few things I want to start with you to talk about. So we've got some uh, questions from listeners, which we'll go over later. And I thought it'd be a nice place to start because this came up earlier uh, a few episodes ago in the podcast, which is just about technical SEO in general. Mm -hmm. So we were discussing and I was saying, I used to think several years ago that technical SEO in 2020 maybe would be less important yeah. than it was in 2010 as search engines got smarter, their technology improved, Indeed. they could crawl the web and there'd be no problems. And I feel almost the opposites happen Indeed. now. We've got these JavaScript frameworks that are causing issues um, and it seems to be we're almost in like a golden age of, of tech SEO. Do you, do, you, it, do you agree with that? Indeed. It's, it's funny that you mentioned this because I think that Many years ago, actually, when Penguin happened, for example, if you remember that, like everybody, like everybody know, but a lot of people at that point switch, even they rebranded many of the old SEO agencies to be content marketing instead of <laughs> SEOs, right? And online PR, this type of thing. And there was a trend at that point, and I was seeing it, and I was like saying, telling myself, like, no, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing that. It was like, SEO is SEO. And then at that point, I, I, I imagine SEO not necessarily becoming more technical because all of the trends were like, yes, search engines are much more capable. Content is king. <laughs> Indeed, content is king. But no, you're completely right. Uh, since uh, uh, a few years ago, this last uh, few years, and I think that we need to thank all this to JavaScript frameworks at the end of that. <laughs> For keeping <laughs> and, us in and, work. <laughs> and, and a lot of, and a lot of, uh, of, uh, of, of front-end developers who I think that are not necessarily, I don't know how to put this, in a way that doesn't actually sound bad, but it shouldn't, like old school, right? Like yeah. learning the, 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 the ropes of web development with simple HTML and CSS. But a lot of people who are learning now uh, end up learning it directly with, with a JavaScript framework directly, or people who used to work as a backend type of devel developer that ended up needing also to, to do the, the, the front end, right? So, Accessibility, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> is not necessarily some of the top priorities there, right? Or, or web standards, unfortunately, be right? Dragons. But but yes, indeed, I think that uh, right now there's a new wave of, of need of a better understanding because of all of this complexity, right? And and it's actually becoming more technical. I think not only because of JavaScript uh, and 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 the necessity of understanding how JavaScript frameworks work in order to better advise. Uh, clients or 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 developers that we work with in case we are in-house specialists uh, to make sure that they are crawlable, indexable, etc. But uh, also there's another wave in parallel, I feel, right? Of, of uh, discovering the opportunity to automate a lot of the tasks mm -hmm. that took a lot of work uh, with, for example, Python. That is, there's a lot of of, 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 of bus really also <laughs> going on indeed of, of trying to automate a lot with what it too. So yes, I see these two trends going on and it's actually pretty excited because I, I do really believe that of course, if we want to, to, to be able to keep updated and to be able to advise, you don't need to know how to develop 
uh, a website from scratch, right? Mm. With a JavaScript framework, but it's important that you understand how it works in order to be able to, to speak and advise and, and to have a conversation and to validate together and to align uh, your work in a way that is actually relevant and connect with the way that developers work on one hand. And then on the other hand, regarding, yes, uh, learning Python or whatever other language, realistically, JavaScript that you can use to, 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 to automate stuff. Realistically, for many, it depends a little bit of who your clients are, because if you work for uh, smaller shops, you can do a little bit of everything and maybe you have more, more, more accessibility to do yeah, mm-hmm. automation yourself and that they allow, uh, they let you to touch a little bit of the code. Unfortunately, for many of us who have clients that are bigger, right? They have their own proper development department and there's no way I think that any of my clients will allow me to to, to try, at least myself, to, even if I could, right? Uh, but yes, it's good to understand and to identify that there are ways to automate many of the otherwise very difficult to scale uh, tasks. Uh, so especially to, if there's the capacity to do it. Just just to interrupt a bit there, you mentioned about working with larger clients with in-house development teams. Yes. And I think probably most SEOs have had the experience where um, <clears throat> you speak to a stakeholder at a business mm-hmm. and talk to them about the value of SEO and yes. they're like, and you and you highlight some of the things maybe where they're falling down and they're like, okay, brilliant, we need to get you in. And then there's that meeting where you're wheeled in to the development team and this you know this is the seo yeah and it it's met sometimes with not you know, <laughs> this is the seo yeah it's not like it's met coming. by rounds of applause sometimes by developers yeah. Yeah. so do you have any tips on how as as technical seos we can bridge that gap between developers and kind of win their buy-in and trust in in what we're doing the process yes 100 percent. i think that it's important to understand to be willing and and open us as mm. CEOs to understand what is the workflow, why, how do they work, why do they work like that, uh, how how is the decision making pro- uh, process from a product perspective? Because at the end of the day, many of the the, the developers also, also end up doing what the product manager <laughs> requests, right, and what they have gotten approval to do and there are resources for. So sometimes sometimes it's not because the developer doesn't want to put time on improving, for example, the how how the the navigation is implemented, right? It's because there are so many other requests that end up waiting more for for them or are prioritized internally. So I think it's critical that we use this project management type of principles, good practices that are out there uh, in order to, well, first understand the requirements, the, the, the context of how it all works, if there are any restrictions that we don't assume. I think that that is a, a little bit of even the way that we communicate things, right? Oh, there's this issue or right away I see also in you pretty much, I, I, I'm sure that you have seen this, or, or uh, agencies like sending pitches directly saying, oh, and you know what, and you have this wrong yeah. right away. And sometimes we assume too much on that, and, and we are not empathic enough to, to, to be willing to understand that at some point it's, it's not because they, 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 don't, they don't know. Uh, or they don't want to, but sometimes because they are in this organization or platforms where there are a lot of restrictions and boundaries and, 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 and there's no way sometimes to do things in the most or to implement things in the ideal way that we will like from an SEO perspective. So there are always trade-offs and, and we need to identify the best possible balance, right? So yes, I think that First, I really believe that all of this start when we are selling the SEO process to the client, validating that there's a right fit with the client. Not in S- not for SEO in general, which is of course important, uh, that they are willing to wait, that there are flexibility and 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 and, and capacity to, to from a technical and and content perspective to 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 do things. If they are willing to weigh and they can weigh to see results, all of those, those sort of things, but also that the way that we work connects well, or we are willing to align the way that we work well with the way that inside the organization, they, they tend to work. Like, for example, if they launch something, they have sprints of, of a week, we are will, we need to be willing to be able to be able to launch really fast and to coordinate in a way that we can validate uh, in a test environment, like I don't know, on, on, on Tuesday, to make sure that the, the the launching that happened on on Thursday 
will be well validated and, and then we crawl again or test again, or validate again right after, right? So it's important that we understand how the organization works, why things are the way they are, what has have been the trade-off in the past, that we also uh, are willing to, to educate, to evangelize. Uh, to, for example, whenever I start with a client where there has, hasn't been an SEO process at all in the past, I always proposed to do a webinar, to do a lot of training, uh, besides doing the, 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 the SEO best practices for yeah. development team, for the content team, and share it together and explain why and the importance of it and the impact that our recommendations also have, not only for SEOs and our own good, but also for their own work and, and the ability of their own work to, to achieve the desired impact at the end of the day. So it's also beneficial for them and should go also, uh, should be also profitable for their own goals, right? So I think it's this is critical. I, I think that uh, you, you mentioned the wave of technical SEO, which is important also to be able to do things uh, in a way that are more effective because of the complexity of current frameworks and uh, and and the necessity sometimes to automate things. But I uh, I don't know if you were. I did this presentation and, and Brighton SEO last year about why SEO processes fail, and it all began with this poll that I did and. Most of the reasons that SEOs gave, I got more than 500 answers, right? Mm -hmm. Were around execution. It's not a problem sometimes once that we reach a point that we are not able to analyze or to identify the cause of, 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 of the challenges mm -hmm. for growth, right? Or what is causing that this is, that this is not growing as expected, right? But having the capacity, uh, the flexibility and the resources to actually execute things or yeah. that things are executed yeah. so for that is very helpful of course to be able to automate stuff as much as possible whenever doable but of course in many organizations they are not necessarily going to let you do that at least directly right but work with developers or engineers who are able to implement that in any case but i think that there's a lot of room also there to improve or to be willing to understand more and learn more and apply more Project management best practices, what I was talking about before, about uh, collecting and validating requirements, uh, validating well that there's a good fit right from the start, a good communication process, a good documentation process, um, a good validation process, monitoring process too. So it requires a lot of work because there, there are tons of different areas involved also to make this happen. It's not only the development team, but also the content team, the PR team sometimes. So it's important and critical. And so I think that a huge chunk of that and part of that in order to achieve SEO success and improve, especially for more complex, of course, if it is your own affiliate website, maybe you don't need this, <laughs> but for larger and more complex type of SEO processes, SEO project management and these type of principles are key. So I think you've raised some really, really good points. I mean, one that stuck out to me there was um, I saw a friend of mine who works in-house, Richard Shove, when he was being asked about what do SEO agencies get wrong when they're engaging with clients? And mm -hmm. he said one of the things was they get these audits land on their desk, um, sometimes quite harshly written, mm -hmm. like you say, you know, this is wrong, this is wrong. And he says, you know, you've made assumptions that we don't know this. Mm -hmm. We know this. We, we know our SEO, but there's technical debt reasons, there's staffing issues, there's other priorities, we need internal buy-in. It's a, it's a lot more complex mm -hmm. than just writing it down and, and then it's been done. And interestingly there, you, you, um, you covered a lot there, but you were talking already there about, we moved from a question about kind of developers onto content teams, onto PR, which slot nicely into the other kind of pillars of SEO. So our technical SEO, our, you know, on-site content and our outreach efforts. And when someone mentions SEO audits, uh, you know, 90% of the time you think technical stuff, but obviously all of these things, you know, the technical, you're not going to have SEO success with just a good technical audit. No. It needs to fall in line with, you know, it's the right content presented the right way. Um, and you need to let people know it exists again, because if you're writing great content and nobody knows about it, it's not going to do anything. So, and all of these things do need looking at and lots of, you know, companies we've worked with uh, need diet help with these things as well so what are your thoughts on because i've seen i've seen you know all types of audits from free automated oh audits <laughs> to you know to great audits to yes. you know a thousand page mm -hmm. documents that cover everything technical content uh links so what are your thoughts on how we should present audits in terms of these three pillars of seo should they all be one document should they be separate because they all lean on each other but the corresponding teams we speak to 
have got quite a narrow interest. So a content person doesn't want to know normally mm. about HF Langs and Chronicles. Indeed. So um. I, I think that there are two sides of, of, of this. What you analyze and how do you present and format the outcome of your analysis for actionability. And mm -hmm. so how you deliver that 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 analysis, the outcome um, to 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 your clients or or stakeholders in the project, right? There, there are two sides of this. From the side of what you analyze, again, oh my God, the typical it depends uh, in SEO, <laughs> but but uh, and the, uh, for example, you won't do, and it's not necessary to do the same type of of, of link profile analysis or popular, link popularity analysis for. Uh, an SEO process that is just starting and you really want to achieve certain growth per year and it's going to be an ongoing SEO process versus a one-time one -time validation for a migration. That is something yeah. very specific. So again, it depends on the nature of, 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 of the project in hand, right? What is, what is the goal that is desired to be achieved? And based on that, to align and connect the, 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 the areas that you actually need to validate to to achieve that result. So here, I think that is critical that we, for the analysis that we ask, what is the type of project? What is the nature of the project? What do we want to achieve? Is this ongoing or a one-time thing? What is what is success? What does success look looks like for the client? Is to not lose traffic after the migration or is 200% uh, uh, year-over-year <laughs> growth or something like that after six months or 12 months or something like that, right? So it's important that we align the, the the audit accordingly but I have to say in most cases I don't know it, it will be very unlikely that we only need to validate the technical area or the technical side to be able to have a proper understanding of the opportunities and and and, and challenges that could be affecting the 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 what what needs to be improved to achieve results. So in most cases, I will say, unless it's something else, even for migration, that could be a migration that could be considered something super technical, right? Uh, I would, of course, uh, validate the, the incoming links, the incoming external links uh, to the to all of the pages of, of the of the website to be able to understand uh, which are those pages that maybe are not necessarily generating that much rankings right now, but a very good share of link popularity because there was a piece many years ago that attracted lots of links and that needs to be really migrated and, and, and well integrated within the new website structure, for example. Or uh, I want to understand, even if I am not going to do an ongoing SEO process uh, to actually yeah, improve the rankings of, of the website over a time, a given time, I really want to understand which are the top pages that are ranking for the top queries that are much more valuable from an SEO perspective and conversion perspective and business perspe perspective to prioritize those. So I want to do a little bit of a rankings analysis uh, and to understand which are those those queries to make sure that the current that, that the new versions of, of those pages are as relevant at least uh, as, as the current ones so for, for those queries to not uh, lose on, on relevance for, for them and to keep those, to be able to keep those rankings too. So you see, so even for something that could be considered technical, it's important to analyze the link profile, the, the current rankings, etc. So I will say it's important to understand the context of the reason of, of and, and the reason why mm -hmm. the website is not be is not being able to to achieve the, the the desired results in rankings. And in most cases, that means not only to analyze the technical side of it, but also the content, but also the links and to tie them all together. And I think that this is also critical in order to prioritize. Because for example, let's imagine maybe the client says, look, uh, these recommendations are, are great, I agree, but I have no capacity, and this has happened to me in the past, to do any redirects or to touch redirects in the next following six months because I, I have this restriction and I cannot. So, Recommend me something else to do in the meantime that will give me results, please. Was it pray? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot say sorry. Anyway, I think that we all, all of us have suffered from this type of, of, uh, of issues, right? So it's important to be able to, to, to prioritize indeed. And there are going to be aspects, depending on the project nature, that could be from the technical 
side that might be might have more weight because of the current situation of the website. In other cases, it will be more link related if it is a competitive sector and the website has a good platform that has been optimized in the past or content related, more sophisticated type of needs in order to achieve results, not the fundamental technical optimization, right? So it's it, it. I think that a really good SEO audit should be able to take as much as possible into consideration to come up with the stronger type of, 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 uh, of, of a more complete analysis based on its own, the website own specific situation and to be able to prioritize accordingly and to have more options to pro prioritize from based on the, on, the, on the business needs. But that is the analysis, right? Another thing is how you format those opportunities or challenges into a document that you deliver to your client to be able to, to be easily understandable and actionable and in, to be implemented, right? And, and of course, you don't want to uh, go through the content or yeah, co content type of, of recommendations with the developers. They, they don't care about those and they are not going to have any influence on those at the end of the day. So I will say that in, indeed, maybe you want to have like a complete document that you want to deliver to your uh main contact point in the in the in the organization but in order to if if, if whenever the, the the client or the main stakeholder uh, the, the decision maker of the project approves you and say okay this we are going with this and these are going to be the kpis and these these are going to be the goals that we are going to follow the in the next in the next steps you really want to split those <laughs> based on the based on the people that you are going to be actually talking about and with the, the copywriters or the content writers and in charge, you are going to share only the content related recommendations and actions and, 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 and share them uh, to go through them and to clarify any doubts and to set an action plan with them for them. But you are not going to likely want to share them. And I do believe that split is important at that point. It was the same with the with the, the development uh, type of or technical type of, of recommendations with the development team. You don't want to mix the content ones there. Why they will need to end up having like a 100 pages documents if they can have a 25 one that have yeah. actually the the actual things, they uh, things that they yeah. need to do. Right. So yes, indeed, I, I think that at that point, as an outcome, with each specific area, it's good to have this split. Indeed. So I think what you've explained in really nice detail and clarity there is the process in which you would go through doing an audit that is focused on outcomes rather than just producing a report at the end of the day. Because yes. I've seen people do technical SEO audits and um, maybe prioritize things that were you know, technically wrong, but you could see in context to everything else that fixing that issue probably actually isn't going to do anything so to give an example of a real example of something um yeah. you've brought up there we're working with a client at the moment who is uh, migrating to a new website and they wanted us to help them with the technical seo process for this and the new website if you look at it on its own is technically sound but one of the things we picked up is a lot of their traffic comes from um, a specific kind of how-to section on their site, which mm -hmm. is in the main menu and everything's linked like one click from the homepage. And in the new proposed site, this would be kind of like three or four or like three, four clicks away. Mm -hmm. um, so we brought it up to them that, well, a lot of your traffic's coming from this. And even if we redirect everything, because these pages will be kind of deeper in the hierarchy, they won't be as important. So that would risk the traffic there. So I think that's a good example of how um, you have to overlay technical considerations, like you say, in context with all the other things to mm -hmm. come out to come out with good decisions. No, I, 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 I do believe that is super critical and, and, and important to be able to prioritize because of this, right? Because there are nice to haves. Yeah. Uh, there are so many nice to have and to have like the perfectly optimized website, we will never end, I think, in order to achieve <laughs> that, right? But there are other things, there are certain aspects that definitely need to be 
done as soon as possible to actually be able to see the results. And indeed, I do believe that in most cases, well, we can ask our client, what what do you consider to be the outcome? Why do you hire me, right? Like, wh- what is the outcome of, of the SEO audit that you want? Is a, a document or to be the, the input or the driver of that SEO process that will achieve results, right? And so for me, Having an audit, and this is the thing, right? There are, there are some audits that will be 100 pages, but will be full of blah, 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 and, and three <laughs> actionable, actually actionable act, uh, uh, activities mm. that will make the change, will do all the change, or most of the change, will, will be the ones that will move the needle of traffic to that website. So what do you add me all of this 90 validations that you have done that I don't need to do anything about, or I, 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 I won anyway, because they are trivial for my growth, right? So give me those three. And for me, given 20 pages outcome, if with these 20 pages, the results are going to be achieved, give it. I mean, I, I don't know why the length of the, of the document should be something or a KPI or a goal or something like that, right? Um, especially if we know that there are, there are there is a need to see results fast, or if there has been a loss of traffic and, and, and the website really wants to change the trend right away. So why you will waste a month going through every single validation possible just to put together a document that will be 100 pages if you actually will end up only applying for that particular case to, to change the trend, what is can be explained in 20, right? Something like that. So for me, it's about achieving the results at the end to be practical uh, from that sense. And then, of course, being able to prioritize well what you add in those 20 and in a way that is actually easy to, to implement and is, and is doable and is feasible for, for the website. So prioritizing based on the impact and, uh, and, 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 and also the, the complexity mm. of, of the action is, is critical too. And that can only happen with a proper understanding of the organization and the business, right? Automatically is undoable. Well, I guess there's, te- there's technical yeah. complexity and there's political complexity. and Of course, if it, yeah. if it depends on, on people and, <laughs> and, and, and decision-making of the people and approval of the people for resources, all of this, it depends. It will be much more harder to completely automate at any point. Yeah. So one thing we haven't touched on uh, much is... I I feel, um, as you've kind of said earlier, that tools we use for SEO have become more important over Mm -hmm. the years because I think SEO has got in some ways harder Mm -hmm. and we are, and with more competition between SEOs, Mm -hmm. it's it's about how quickly and effectively we can complete a task. So I think that's one of the things I notice sometimes when I look at um, people starting SEO and people who've been doing it longer, that they may do the same job, but someone with more experience or with a tool can do so much more mm-hmm. a lot quicker. So what what kind of tools do you use in your audit process? Are you using kind of, um, you know, off-the-shelf stuff we've got? Have you got any of your own kind of sheets and scripts? What What does the yeah. later toolbox look like? Yeah, I, I do a, a, a lot of mix and, and always try to have a, at least a couple of different data sources for the same type of... of uh, of analysis or validation mm-hmm. just to be able to verify if if the outcome is correct or at least it's online because it's very unlikely that it will be 100% the same right and this is something that we need to i think that we need to 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 embrace in SEO we cannot because i i have also seen people going overly crazy regarding oh my god but the positions are personalized and the, the report here says that it's in position one, but realistically, if I search with this IP from this country, it's not position one, but position second. And yes, and there are ads in this location. There are no ads here and there are maps in this one. And not There's a knowledge drop here, so the impact, whatever. Like we cannot try, I think it's, uh, the, the effort doesn't pay off to try to be 100% accurate yeah. because it's almost impossible at this point because of the personalization of, of, of the whole, of, what is actually shown by Google, yeah. right? Um, but then at the end of the day, I think that always having different da- data sources and and also to try to achieve that the, the, the trends should be correlated 
of course, and 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 uh, consistency among among different data sources. So, for example, for keyword research, I I really like to use SEMrush and Systrix, and competition analysis. I use them both too. And I always double check a little bit what the what we can consider the official data source that is the the one of Google AdWords that I use mostly for this, not necessarily for for ads mm -hmm. uh, that I don't do. Uh, and then for technical optimization and um, and and content analysis, I use uh, Botify. I use Write. Um, I use also a mix of different features. This is the thing that is that are found across all different type of, of, of tools. Like for example, for cognitive SEO, they do have this really, really nice content analyzer uh, where for any query that you include, you can not only get a top 10 rank pages for mobile or desktop, but they actually include their, all the link metrics, the content, the, the length of content, uh, all the semantically related terms, for the query that they are run for, and you can easily compare them with yours, so you can quite easily assess what is the gap regarding content, regarding the link profile too. They also show the link profile and and and, and how yeah op supposedly optimized. Like they give you a metric, right? But this is the thing. For me, the metric is okay. I mean, it's a reference to have, but what I actually want to see is that they can facilitate a lot for me, that analysis of identifying the gap of my website versus the competitors to be able to understand what it is. Is the length of the content? Is the format of the content? Is, 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 are the terms or how the semantically connected uh, keywords are included <coughs> across the content uh, for relevance? Or is because of the link profile of that particular page, internal, external? Is because of the overall, uh, indeed, domain type of, of, of authority? So. At, all of these different metrics that I can easily validate together. So this is the thing, a lot of people in the past, I want to clarify this, I think this is very relevant at this point. Um, I was teaching at this SEO course in, in Madrid, in Spain, where I was involved in, in, uh, in this um, SEO training. And there was one of the students who raised the hand when I was explaining how to do something. It's like, well, the NSEOs is only using a lot of tools. But I was like saying, yeah, but it's important to know how to use it. This is critical because the, the most important tool is our own brain to be able to connect how all of these metrics work together, what you should actually do about that with yeah. that information that you're getting, right? So, so yeah, that, that is fundamental. So just sorry that I, it's so easy for me to, to, to start talking about something else just to finish. So uh, I, uh, Botify has also this, not only a lot of people think um, about it like a purely technical type of it's a crawler, but they do a really nice work also from the content assessment and, and connecting that with your own traffic and, and, and keyword data from Google Search Console. The same with Write. And I love also with Write that uh, it, 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 the way that the, 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 these metrics are displayed, so you can put them in context again. So it's, oh, this, this, this page has thin content issues or content duplication issues across all of these others, but which is the one that is actually attracting traffic, right? What is the, what is the one that has all, most of the external links mm -hmm. going to? So I love this integration of data from different uh, data sources, external uh, tools, uh, all put together to be able to assess and say which chart, which is the one that should be actually the canonical one that I should keep, right? So that facilitates a lot of decision making and optimization process. So, right, I love how they connect all the data for that. So, yeah, for technical optimization, I use uh, them both. And then for run tracking and monitoring, I use also a couple, especially SU Monitor that. It's great because they show the evolution for a given set of, 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 of keywords, uh, also putting into consideration your competitors. And you can also connect Google Analytics and Google Search Console to be able to see also the impact on traffic. And they do this, they, they have this really nice um, sort of features tracking. So you can easily see connected with your uh, ranking fluctuations whenever uh, you have dropped 
a nicer feature. So, for example, you had like I don't know the you were showing you, you you were shown with a video result or thumbnail, and you are not anymore, or you drop from the carousel. So you can see that all of that historical data in a really nice way. And also you can put that easily in context there with your competitors. So you can see the share of visibility for any group of terms in mobile and desktop versus your competitors. And they have also this um, feature for projections that is actually pretty nice that you need to use careful, of course, as <laughs> usual, but it's also nice uh, to have there. And then Run Ranger, what they do pretty well, just to to finish, sorry. Go, Maybe go. They do have this really, really nice integration. Now that I have been playing much more with YouTube, with with all of uh, the the search features and the way that they are able to tell you, for example, your specific ranking fluctuations inside the carousel, the nice. video the video carousel. Yep. It's, it's really nice. And then you understand how, for example, freshness has an impact for uh, a page that has an okay. and 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 you can do that for example if it is for video purposes and uh, you, you can connect your website you can tie your website with your own youtube channel so you can see in the same report those uh, the fluctuations of your own website versus your youtube channel in case you have your video in, in both right and see what is the weight of one or the other for example so and they also have this so features tool, for example, that tells you which is the the the, the rankings of most of the pages that are included in in the as a as a as a feature snippet, for example. So they have all of this sort of little. This is the thing: the functionalities that can be found in some tools like Run Ranger, for example. Even if they are Run Tracker, I it's hard to find in others, and vice versa, right? Sometimes I find this very nice little features in some tools. That is why I need to have many tools because um, instead of having one that has it all, I have seen that unfortunately there's no specific one that has it all and is the best for everything, right? I need to have different ones for each. And then just to, I realize I haven't said anything for link, link analysis, sorry. Um, Cognitive SEO. Cognitive SEO, they work with Majestic um, link uh, data. And they have these amazingly beautiful, well-segmented reports that facilitate analysis so much. And you can import your own links too from Google Search Console, from Ahrefs, SEMrush, any other link data source there uh, and consolidate them all together. And they really facilitate to identify link spam and natural patterns. And you can also compare them rather easily uh, with your competitors too from every type of yeah metric or segmentation that you want to do wow a lot of tools so a lot of tools i think i think the takeaway there is i'm a tool addict is, <laughs> is not is not to get kind of too committed to any one tool to use tools that do the same thing to validate the data you're getting to use multiple data sets from analytics from search console if you can with those tools as well to help you give other context as well um, and I found personally, I, I used to start to in their in their kind of birth, a tool would set out to do one thing and then it would get popular and then they would add on and on and on and on. Yes. So you've got some tools that do one thing really well, Indeed. but they have other features that aren't so great. So I tend to still use sets of tools like uh, I won't name anyone, but yeah. there's tools that I use for a specific task and they've got 20 other features and I ignore them because when course, you compare yeah. them to the leaders in that field, they're but not But this is the thing, I, I, I have this feeling and I, I can understand from a decision making perspective also if I was their business owner, right, that they need to grow somehow yeah. and then they realize that they don't want, want to have all the eggs in a single bag too, etc. But at the end of the day, this is how they were born and this is in some cases well, many of the, if they started as a as a as a as a, as a keyword research tool that is the strongest where they are for yeah. right if now they have links they have all of this or they have a crawler or they have whatever but i don't use them for that because for that i will use that other tool that exactly. started as a technical seo tool and has all the strength from that side i completely agree with that indeed so i'm um, i'm gonna we're already at 38 minutes so i'm gonna ask you some oh listener God. questions that we <laughs> that we got in so just before you came i tweeted out that you're gonna yes. be here and if anyone has any questions um so the first response i got was from Simon Wharton, who's Director of Business Strategy at Pushon. And he says, um, Elaide is my favorite ever SEO speaker. The quality of her presentations and the sheer volume of knowledge she shares is overwhelming. 
He didn't actually have a question. I Thank think you he, very much. That's he, so kind He just wanted him. to say that, no. so I thought I'd share it with Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice. No, that's so kind. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I've, um, yeah, I, I really do appreciate when people say something like this because it made me keep pushing. As you say, I have so much going on that it's, it's we, difficult. We, we yeah. have got some actual questions, though. So yeah. actually related to what you Thank were just you. talking about, about um, kind of toxic backlinks. So uh, from Twitter, Casey mm. Moore said... Are the automated tools on site audits to reduce toxic backlinks effective? Huh. Mm. <laughs> well, I have to say, they can really facilitate at the end of the day the, the, the identification, segmentation of the patterns, because at the end of the day, it's about that. It's patterns that are definitely, show definitely that those links are not natural, right? And, uh, and indeed, a, a few of these tools do really a nice work identifying those patterns. If they are all coming from, uh, websites that are are um, not of the best quality na nature, or they are all linked together, yeah. or have only links within their content, or they are coming from the same uh, IP classes, uh, uh, things like that, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, they can, uh, I will say, uh, accelerate the analysis a lot. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't validate the outcome of that so i shouldn't just automated. copy and paste them all straight into the all in the dis oh my god no <laughs> you can end up you know this this is very very funny but you can though you can end up disavowing a lot of links of websites that are completely okay and are actually completely spontaneous and natural like and shouldn't be disavowed i i i get why people get a little bit you know stress mm. and 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 super scared of this because you tend to disavow when you're not in a good position of course uh but at, at the end of the day we need to you know we we, we need we need to take this or see this for, uh, from a reasonable perspective if we, if the share of these links are one percent of your total share of, of links if 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 99 of your links are okay and are this and there are people who asking me sometimes oh Aleda, but i have these links from from China, should I disavow them? Why do I have links from China? It's like, what do they, like, oh my God, really? It's like, if, if, if you were disavowing every single link that don't come from your own language, um, you will end up disavowing, I don't know, a really yeah. good, high quality ones that some point, at some point, may have found your content really useful, right? And, and they endorse your content because of that. So yeah, at, at, at the end of the day, use the tools. They can accelerate a lot of the work, but please validate, double check that what they have actually found is correct. And most of these tools anyway, they actually, I think that they warn about it and they will show and they will allow you to reclassify mm. the, the links. So you are able to have your final uh, list of actual spammy links that you have been able to, to validate within their own interface. Yeah. Cool. I think it is important. One thing, um, a couple of things uh, I've heard recently, well, earlier last year, I didn't actually know was, um, and this might be helpful for people listening, that if you do disavow links and then you update the disavow file, you can undisavow links, which I didn't know uh, originally when they spoke mm -hmm. about the disavow tool. It sounded like uh, once they're gone, they are they're gone. They're gone. Um, the other thing that I don't really have a conclusion on, I spoke about it actually in the last episode when someone was talking about uh, links, because um, my view has always been I'm, I rarely use the disavow tool because the, the theory was um, from what Google was saying was if we identify spammy links, we will discount them. Okay, mm -hmm. we won't count them, but yeah. we won't apply like a negative for that. But so my theory was, well, if Google knows the links are bad, it's going to be discounting them. Therefore, if I discount links that may not be great, but Google hasn't classified as spammy, that's actually going to retract from my link profile. So it's 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 only unless I've got a penalty or something like a potential negative. But then I updated my thinking because I've seen Google a couple of times now say, um, and both these things, they're not contradictory, which is they take into account your whole link profile. So there'll be a set of links which they may give you credit for, which look low quality. Mm -hmm. But then if you keep getting lots and lots of low quality links, they may reassess those and on a I guess on a probability nature, say actually these are probably intentionally bad and then you may suddenly lose value from a lot of those links. And that's and that's That we're taking into consideration at some point because yeah. th there was not this volume 
Exactly. And it's, it'd be interesting because I don't think that's then that's not going to get flagged as like a penalty in mm -hmm. Search Console, but you will most likely see a dip in ranking. So I'm still, it, like you said, it's a real case by case basis and using those tools just to highlight, yeah, what percentage and are they growing and where they're coming from. And yeah, if they are Chinese links, get someone to read what the anchor text is. Maybe it's a good yeah. thing. <laughs> so lastly, um, I've got two other questions for you. I'm going to combine them into one question because I think they overlap a lot. Okay. Um, so Again, from Twitter, we had uh, Lyndon N.A. I don't know a lot about Lyndon. I talked to him a fair bit. He has a Darth Vader avatar. Um, he asked a whole bunch of questions, but I picked this one out. He said, um, are there any reliable or effective shortcuts for quick overviews in terms of audits? And I think it would be worth listening to uh, through LinkedIn. We've got one other question I think mm -hmm. relates to this. Uh, so this is from Ryan Roberts, who's the SEO lead at Zazzle Media. And he said, I'd be interested to know if a lady goes into an audit with a preconception of what the potential issues are based on things like the industry or the platform and mm -hmm. your history of dealing with similar sites? Or is it always just let the audit process tell all? Well, you know, really good questions. And indeed, they overlay at the end of the day. Of course, I if, if a website from, I don't know, the casino or poker type of, of uh, sectors come to you, I will right away go and... <laughs> check the link profile of, yeah. of those, those websites, even if no, if I am not a, a, a link builder myself, right? You know from, uh, if, the, if these are very old schools from, I don't know, uh, certain industries, you know more or less which are the main challenges that this particular new industry suffer from, right? Like cannabis play a, a website uh, because of the reason Google updates targeting mm -hmm. certain topics to the it related type of, of, of principles, uh, etc. So yes, you, I think that of course I, I, it would, it wouldn't be fair to say I don't have any preconception when a website comes, comes to me. Um, but I try to keep an open mind, right? Because unfortunately sometimes there are just coincidences out there. So, so just to give you an example, um, I was helping yesterday with a migration that hopefully goes well because it's well validated. Yes. Uh, but uh, if not, imagine it, it's at the same time that the latest Google update. So if nobody will have taken care of that uh, migration, if it got bad, it goes bad, uh, you will assume only because of the, that day it's the same than the one of the Google update or is an effect of, of the latest update, right? So you, you should never assume it's always important to double check, but just for a quick overview, what I always do, um, is to, to take a look a little bit of the trend of, of the rankings in SEMrush, mm -hmm. which are the top rank keywords to see the, the ups and downs evolution that we can see rather easily to see the growth of organic rankings versus the competitors, because that can tell me if they are dropping in rankings uh, or what can be seen from, from an organic traffic perspective as a loss. It's just an industry trend or, 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 or seasonality thing or something like that, right? Um, just to double check things and to see the evolution of which could be the site. And then I check also um, in, in SEMrush um, the, the queries that are being ranked and which are the pages that are ranking because sometimes, and there is a thing, the website is so powerful and so authoritative that it's not that they are tr like losing traffic like crazy, right? They are still ranking for some keyword, important keywords. Uh, but then you realize that the pages that are ranking for them are not the correct ones. There are a lot of cannibalization issues between uh, different pages that are not necessarily consistent, mm -hmm. the ones that should be actually ranking for for, for those queries. So I think that a lot can be, as a quick overview, can be identified and said very quickly by seeing the rankings of those websites, the overall, not only if they are ranking well in the top position for top queries, but how they are doing that, with which pages, the trend of, of those rankings. And of course, a little crawl uh, what Screaming Frog never heard. <laughs> Everybody, just to double check, if you give me, and I have done this out, uh, site audits, live site audits in the past uh, at Popcom, for example. They, they are very common in the last few years. I have done those. So the typical thing that I have open is SEMrush in one screen and the other Screaming Frog. Yeah. Crawl very quick, 
like this yeah. in with one window. It's really window. good, the instant yeah. feedback. I mean, I've done that on yeah. phone calls before when people yeah. have phoned to talk to me about SEO and as soon as they've said the website, I'll start a crawl yeah. <laughs> so I can Indeed. see during the conversation with them about what's going Indeed. on. Indeed, yeah. So these two, I will say, to double check. Ada, thank you so much. Um, there is a lot there for people uh, to pick through, I think. Um, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Look forward to hearing your talk this evening. Thank you for the opportunity. And I'm sorry if I end up, oh my God, talking too much because I tend to. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's what people are here for. So we will be back uh, with episode 45 next Monday, which will be the 27th of January. As usual, you can get all of the show notes, links and transcription of this episode at search.withcanda.co.uk. And if you're reading online, don't forget you can subscribe on pretty much any platform, whether it's iOS or Spotify. Have a great week.